This is a laptop motherboard that I bought for £15. I plan on making a case for it and using it to play games on my TV. I'll be doing this with the help of Bazite, one of Linux's gaming distros. This motherboard was cheap because it has a domain lock, plus it also has an MDM lock which businesses use to control settings and software that can persist even after a wipe. I can't remove these without the company's password, but that shouldn't stop me from installing a Linux distro on here, at least I think. After unboxing it, I find out that it's attached to the original part of the L380 ThinkPads case, which I wasn't expecting. And at this point, I'm half wondering if I should leave it on there and make a top cover for it. But I decide there's more fun to be had making a whole case from scratch. First off, strip the L380 case off by undoing all the mounting screws. Disconnect the Wi-Fi antennas. Then out she comes. Two RAM slots, one M.2 slot, i5 8th gen CPU, and it even came with a Wi-Fi card. I think I did alright here for £15. And this little dangly thing is the on and off switch. More about that later. Time to take some measurements so I can get this into CAD and get a design going. 306mm, 41mm, 58mm, and it's a little strange to see the back of your own head. Note these down in my notebook. You'd be hard pressed to tell that I went to art school with my lack of drawing ability. And then figuring out what mounting holes I need to pick up on. Some more measuring. Into CAD we go. I won't bore you too much with this bit, but I import an image of the motherboard taken as square on as I can manage, then scale it to match the dimensions I took earlier. 58.22. We were aiming for 58mm, so close enough. Now, you're not going to find SpaceX doing something like this to design their rockets, but it's a quick and dirty way of getting a scale representation to design around. At this point, it's as simple as connect the dots to get a centre line. And a bit of offsetting, and we're away. This part is purely to see if the mounting holes I have on CAD align with the motherboard in real life. With the first design doodled up, it's time to hop into Fusion, convert my sketch into a 3D model. And 3D print it. Printed successfully. I'm using some really old nasty filament I had lying about, so the print quality really isn't the best. I offer up the 3D printed part to the motherboard, and two of the mounting holes need moving slightly, but the rest seem to align pretty nicely. With the mounting holes sorted, it's time to flesh out the design a little. Plenty of time sitting at my desk doing things like this. Measuring, adjusting the 3D model. I go through three more design tweaks and a fair bit of 3D printing. After all that, I settle on this. Each side is printed in free in the hope that if I need to change anything, there is less to 3D print. I can swap out the part that needs adjusting without having to 3D print a large section. With my workbench looking like this, it's time to have a quick spruce up. Put things away so I can get assembling the case for the motherboard. Workbench in a semi-clean state, and given that it's 9.30am, I've substituted my normal beer for a small cup of tea. It's time to start assembling the case and hope it fits. Screw each of the three sections to the larger connecting plate. Do a little test fit to see how it's looking. Which I'm not overly happy about with the joins. My printer was struggling with warping on the edges. So where they all butt up together, it isn't the prettiest. It's functional, but not the best. I'll be screwing everything together with these heated inserts. These are for M2.5 bolts and generally speaking, I prefer M3. But M3 screws wouldn't fit through the holes in the motherboard. Place the heated insert into the corresponding holes. Then with a soldering iron, heat them up and they melt into the 3D printed holes and hold tight. What you can see me doing after each one is pushing it down flush with my finger, which isn't the wisest move, as you might imagine. They're hot and I burn my fingers several times. But as someone who was a blacksmith for 10 years, 
I'm pretty good at getting burnt. Heated inserts all in and flush. Time to take the motherboard out of the previous prototype. Hopefully, it's its final home. And it fits. Mounting holes, fans, ports, all seem to align quite nicely, which I was pleased about, because at this point, I'd run out of black filament. Screw it all down. Fit the speakers. Who can spot the problem here? Mount the NVMe. Try and find one of those annoyingly small NVMe screws in this box. Fit my 8 gigabytes of DDR4 mismatched RAM. The colour difference here is driving me around the bend. They say size doesn't matter, but check these Wi-Fi antennas out. I screw in the brass Wi-Fi pigtails into the holes. Connect up the Wi-Fi card. Then put the lid on. Screw it all down. And then fit the oversized Wi-Fi antennas. And at this point, I think I'm done. But, in my haste, I've forgotten to repaste the CPU. So off with the top again. And I've also found another 4 gigabytes of DDR4, which is green. So I swap that out, and I feel great about it. To repaste the CPU, I start to take the motherboard out of its case. While I'm doing a screw, I spot that I've got one of the speakers the wrong way around. I don't want to disconnect the Wi-Fi antennas, so I work on repasting the CPU in a pretty awkward manner. Disconnect the fan. And the thermal paste doesn't really seem that bad, to be fair. Clean the heatsink. CPU all cleaned. Thermal paste applied. Heatsink back on. Reconnect the fan. Swap the speakers round. Anyway, with the CPU repasted, speakers turned around, and colour matching RAM, it's time to close it up for good. Or, at least until I find anything else wrong. This is my not-so-elegant solution to turning the motherboard on and off. I use a 3D printed pointer to hit the small button, on, off. I'll leave it up to yourselves to insert a level of crudeness here that works for you. And here it is. Also, printed some stands to keep it upright. With it all buttoned up, I'm curious. Can I get Windows 11 on this MDM and domain lock motherboard? I'm feeling pretty confident with the help of our friend, Rufus. Windows 11 ISO, locked and loading. And ha, what do you know? Windows 11 is installing. A little test of YouTube and Google Maps to see how the CPU and RAM usage is holding up. And at this point I notice the speakers aren't working. So I pop the lid off and I see I didn't plug them in. This is going well. But really, it felt sluggish and slow. OBS was sucking a fair chunk of CPU usage out of this machine. But look at this screenshot. 3.3 gigabytes of RAM to do nothing. Well done, Microsoft. Right, let's get back to the real work, which is why we are all here. Bazite. Some housekeeping first about Bazite. It has a different philosophy to your average run-of-the-mill Linux distro. Bazite is a Fedora-based atomic Linux distro that's heavily tuned for gaming, and especially for Steam. Bazite's base system is mostly read-only. It's designed to be immutable, meaning updates replace the entire OS at once. Because of this, you don't generally touch the base system. Bazite does use RPM OS tree as its package manager, but installing packages that way layers them onto the system and requires a reboot, so it's usually avoided unless you cannot get them any other way. And instead, the recommended way to get bits of software is to use Flatpak. As Flatpaks are sandboxed, they don't mess with the base OS, which helps keep the system clean and in turn, stable. For command line tools like HTOP and BTOP, the approach is to use a distro box. This lets you run a full Linux distro in a container and install whatever CLI tools you want without touching the base system. And this is what I'll be doing. But one of the biggest perks of Bazite is that it comes with Proton pre-installed. What is Proton, I hear you ask? Proton is a lovely little compatibility layer that sits between Linux and Windows games, allowing most Windows games to run on Linux. Because of this, most AAA game titles will run extremely well in Bazite and often with no extra setup. Anyway, 
Hopefully, that brief explanation of Bazite makes some sense. Install time. Plug in my NVMe with Ventoy on. Sort out the boot order. Restart. And we get Ventoy. Select Bazite. We get the Bazite logo. Followed by a live session of Bazite. And we need to hard install it. So first, click on this icon on the top left and follow the simple install steps. With the installation underway, I think I've earned a beer. Once installed, a reboot is needed. Then we log in using our super duper secure password. Before doing anything else, I'm going to flat pack in OBS so we can get a screen recording going. Having a little look around and I find the system updater, which I run and it completes without a hitch. Of course, a reboot is needed. After the reboot, I flat pack in Spotify and LibreOffice, as these are both nice to have. Next, I want to get some CLI tools going, so it's time to set up a distro box. Just going to double check I have distro box installed, which I do. Then create a distro box. I call mine CLI Playtime. And I'm creating mine with Fedora. Also, I realise now at this point, OBS is cutting the bottom part of the screen recording off. Thanks, OBS. Enter the distro box. Once inside, you can install CLI tools like normal. As I've chosen Fedora as my distro box, I use DNF as my package manager. Also, you can export the CLI tools out of the distro box to run on Bazite's normal terminal without affecting the immutable base layer. This is good because you don't have to enter the distro box every time you want to run, say, FastFetch, HTOP or BTOP. Now it's time for the meat and gravy. Games. What games am I going to play on this little motherboard? I'm no AAA gamer, which is lucky. Last Call of Duty I played was on the PS3 when I had a full head of hair, but as a kid, I played Age of Empires, Tibia and RuneScape of course. So I'm going to relive being 13. Let's go to Steam and get Age of Empires going. Age of Empires Definitive Edition for £3.74. Take my money. Download it. And open it up. And it's running. Obviously this prehistoric game doesn't require any powerful computing ability. But I'm quite impressed it's running quite as well as it is. I'm going to very much enjoy playing Age of Empires again. Up next, a classic, old school RuneScape. So back on Steam for this. Again, download it, run it. It opens up, no problem. The laptop's motherboard isn't keen on running it with a large screen as it's a little bit laggy. But overall, it seems to run it well enough to play if kept at a smaller screen size. Let's go and have some fun in the wilderness. Bit of PKing. Let's hope Torvesta doesn't see this. And I bottle it. Up next, Tibia. Arguably one of the games I have the fondest memories of. Our dear leader, PewDiePie, has even mentioned playing this when he was a kid. On Tibia's website, they have a client download for Linux. To download it. And I'm making a directory called Games, which is where I'll be running Tibia from. A little bit of setup and I get the client working. Now, can I remember my password? We're in. Let's go kill some Cyclopses. And of course, some dragons. And it's running well. But Tibia could run on a potato with a 12 volt battery connected, so no surprise there. The text does seem a little bit fuzzy, so I'm not sure what's causing that. Perhaps someone can point me in the right direction to fix this. But there you go. Bazite on an MDM domain locked laptop's motherboard. I'm genuinely looking forward to playing some Age of Empires while I veg out on my sofa. Thanks for watching. Joe.